Oh, what's up guys? Nurse Lake here, and uh, welcome to simplenursing.com. Before we start today's video, please remember to access your free quiz and preview our new study guides not on YouTube. Click the link right up here anytime during this video. All right, let's get to it. Pablo is a 32-year-old male presenting with a blood pressure of 145 over 95, ST depression on the cardiac monitor, serum potassium of 3.1, and complaints of frequent urination during the day. Oh snap, what could be wrong with Pablo? And what priority nursing interventions do you need to know for the NCLEX? I'm Nurse Blake, and today we're talking about hyperaldosteronism, which is what happens when there is too much secretion of aldosterone, aka aldosterone. He's our security guard bouncer of the kidneys. We'll call him Al for short. He adds sodium and water into the body by not letting it leave the kidneys, which makes the blood pressure go crazy high. An L for lets potassium out of the body and into the potty, which causes low potassium, aka hypokalemia. In fancier medical terms, hyperaldosteronism, also aldosteronism, is a medical condition where the adrenal cortex secretes too much aldosterone hormone, which can lead to lower levels of potassium in the blood, hypokalemia, and increased hydrogen ion excretion, alkalosis. Now, we also call Al our saltwater hormone to help students differentiate between aldosterone and ADH, the antidiuretic hormone, a totally different hormone that keeps water in the body and not in the potty. Okay, so let's do a quick review of normal adrenal physiology. As you know, the adrenals sit on top of the kidneys and help the body adapt to stress by using MAC hormones. Just like MAC computers, the adrenals look like the Apple logo. So remember the acronym MAC. M stands for mineral corticoids, like aldosterone, AKA aldosterone, our steroid hormone, security guard bouncer to the kidneys, in the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Again, remember Al, he adds sodium and water in to balance blood pressure, and L lets potassium out of the body and into the potty. Next is A for androgen steroids to help with hair and sex. And our first C is for cortisol steroid, our very famous stress hormone. Lastly, C is for catecholamines, epi and norepi, also called adrenaline, our fight and flight hormones, which increase heart rate and blood pressure. Okay, so now that we reviewed the basics of normal physiology, what's going on in hyperal? Well, we have high aldosterone, right? So the ability to add sodium and water into the body is super high, which leads to hypernatremia and hypertension. And the loss of potassium is greater. So hypokalemia sets in, and we get a higher pH level as the body loses more hydrogen ions in the urine. This is called metabolic alkalosis. So we will see complaints that all stem from high al, high aldosterone. Again, our main sign and symptom, think high al, a for add sodium and water, so we get hypernatremia, over 145, and hypertension, a blood pressure of over 140 over 90. L is for loss of potassium, resulting in hypokalemia, a potassium level of 3.5 or less. Now, our main sign for hypernatremia is polydipsia, extreme thirst, a swollen dry tongue, and increased muscle tone, which is a huge NCLEX tip. And our big symptoms for hypertension are headaches and facial redness, also called flushing. Now, for hypokalemia, our low potassium of 3.5 or less, everything will be low and slow. So our heart monitor will show ST depression and prominent U waves. So remember, anyone with low potassium, we always put them on a heart monitor. This is the first thing we do as a nurse. I can't stress that enough. It's always a big priority. As far as a muscular system, it will be low and slow with decreased DTRs, deep tendon reflexes, and lastly, GI will be low and slow with constipation and hypoactive bowel sounds. Okay, now for the weird signs and symptoms. Patients get both polyuria, which is frequent urination, and diluted urine, which is a low specific gravity of less than 1.005. So to help you remember this for your next test or the NCLEX, use the acronym HYPERAL. H for hypertension, a blood pressure of over 140 over 90. And Y is for yielding or slow DTRs and bowel sounds. P 
P is for polyuria and polydipsia, excessive urination and thirst. E is for ECG, and this will show you waves in ST depression from the low potassium of less than 3.5. And again, the first action is to always put this patient on a cardiac monitor. The patient's heart can stop with low potassium, so do this first. R is for raining urine, a low SG of 1.005. A is for adding sodium, a sodium level of over 145. And L is for losing potassium, 3.5 or less. Okay, so now what are the causes? Well, it can occur because of primary causes, like those inside the adrenals, or from secondary causes outside the adrenals. Okay, let's start with the primary causes. Now, it's usually idiopathic, which means we don't know why it's caused. Idiopathic means we're idiots to the pathology. But a big cause is usually from Kahn syndrome, where a non-cancerous tumor grows inside one of the adrenals. This makes the adrenal overproduce hormones. So we see that little white dot right there? This is our little tumor. Lastly, family genetics can play a role, meaning it runs in the family. This can cause high blood pressure in children and teens. Now switching over to secondary, it's caused by things outside the adrenals. This happens in congestive heart failure, where the renals receive less blood flow due to less cardiac output from the heart. This low oxygen to the kidneys forces our kidneys to think the body has a low blood pressure. So the kidneys react by releasing the dominoes into activation of the RAS system, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click up right here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts for helping us make these great videos. See you guys next time.